So a question came in from one of my Patreon supporters. This is from Joe. What was the uniform of the Knights Templar? Well, uh, Joe, just the short answer is the Knights Templar, through most of their history, wore a white mantle and a red cross. And uh, Helen Nicholson, in her book, The Knights Templar, discusses this. This is Helen Nicholson talking about the attire of the Knights Templar. Their knights, with their beards and in their long dark tunics and white mantles, with the red cross on the left side and a dark cap on their heads, were a familiar sight in every royal court in Catholic Europe and the Crusader states in the Holy Land or Latin East. So initially, when the Templars were founded, in 1119, they did not have a specific uniform that they wore. They were not yet a recognized order of the church. And so they wore whatever clothing they had, or more specifically, whatever was donated to them. They were still a very small organization at that time. But um, at the Council of Troyes in 1129, when they were recognized as an order, they were given a habit, and they were given uh, the white mantle, and this is significant because the white mantle symbolizes purity, so that reflects their vow of chastity. But also it reflects the relationship the Templars had with the Cistercians. The Cistercians were very influential on the Templars. As we know, Bernard of Clairvaux was one of their early sponsors. And um, the Cistercians actually wore white. So uh, Helen Nicholson, again, has this little passage here that gives us some insight into the uh, relationship between the Cistercians and the Templars. So this is from Nicholson. In July 1202, Brother Philip de Plessy, master of the order from 1201 to 1209, wrote to Arnold I, abbot of Citeaux, about the Muslim attacks, sandstorms, plagues, and even an earthquake which had struck the Crusader states in the east. He asked for the Cistercians' prayers and added, And since our house took its institution from yours and your predecessors, it seems to us that we are especially bound to love you, and you similarly ought to love us. So the Templars got their white mantle in 1129, but it wasn't till 1147, during the era of the Second Crusade, that they were given the right to wear the Red Cross, which was very much an honor in uh, medieval Latin Christendom. So in 1147, Pope Eugenius III gave the Templars the right to wear the Red Cross amid the preparations for the Second Crusade. As we know, the Templars would play an incredibly important role in the operations of King Louis VII of France, one of the main leaders of the Second Crusade. And in many ways, the Second Crusade was kind of uh, the first moment when the Templars were just this enormously high-profile presence in Latin Christendom. Uh, the granting of the Red Cross to the Templars was a sign of their increasing importance and also the important role they played in the military conduct of uh, the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem. The Red Cross was a symbol of martyrdom. So what this meant was the Templars wearing the Red Cross they, it was a sign of their willingness to die in battle for God. So now I'm going to take a look at a passage from Malcolm Barber's book, The New Knighthood, which discusses this issue of the growing importance of the Templars and uh, Pope Eugenius III's granting of the Red Cross to them. During these years, the Templars moved from a role so marginal that they are not even mentioned by Fulcare of Chartres, the chronicler, who was the contemporary of Hugh of Payen in Jerusalem, to the very center of the action. A measure of the extent of this change can be obtained by observing the role of the French Templars in the crusade of King Louis VII in 1147 through 48. The Templars were able to assemble 130 knights at the chapter meeting in Paris on 27 April 1147, before the departure of the crusade, presumably intending that this contingent should travel to the east with the French army it seems unlikely that there would have been fewer sergeants or serving brothers accompanying them. Present at the chapter were Pope Eugenius III, King Louis VII, and four archbishops, persons so eminent that in rank, if not in numbers, 
the gathering was comparable to that brought to St. Denis for the consecration of the new choir of the Abbey Church three years earlier. According to William of Tyre, it was under Eugenius III that the Templars received the right to wear the characteristic red cross upon their tunics, symbolizing their willingness to suffer martyrdom in the defense of the Holy Land, and this chapter meeting would have been the most appropriate setting for this event. Thanks for listening, guys. The music featured in this video is my song, Templar, which is available on my CD, Scatheless. You can pick up a copy by clicking on the link below in the information box below this video. Thanks. Church on a hill in the ground